Peace and blessings, everyone. My name is Brunea, and I want to talk to you about confidence. Um, we can all think of a time when, you know, we did something we were passionate about or something we just really wanted to do, and we may have felt very confident about it, right? We felt good about our performance. We felt good about the potential outcome. We were ready to kill the competition, right? Whether it's sports, theater, or maybe like a speech or a presentation, we felt good about it, right? And we may have felt nervous, but it wasn't like a bad nervous. It was like more like excitement, right? We can also remember a time where we didn't feel too hot about doing something maybe it was our first time doing it right and we were nervous and it was like the bad nervous where you kind of feel uneasy and you're like i really don't want to do this um we probably if it was a presentation we maybe fumbled through it maybe we were playing basketball and we shot in the other <laughs> opponent too who knows we all get nervous and we've all had bad experiences right um in both of these scenarios confidence really determined our performance or it impacted our performance. The same thing happens on tests. We maybe we don't think about this often, but confidence is in every aspect or facet of our lives. Um, and when we are confident, we typically perform better. So today I want to talk about how we can build confidence before taking tests, but also how that translates when we actually do take the test. First things first, there's a lot of wisdom in fake it till you make it. You have to convince yourself that you can do it. And maybe you don't feel like you can, or maybe you don't feel like you can get the score that you want, but believe it until you actually believe it, okay? Um, it's kind of like when they say when you're sad, smile. Eventually, over time, you'll start to feel better. Right? You'll, you'll feel happier or at least less sad. Um, same thing here. Convince yourself that you can do it. Always, always, always say, I got this in the bag. I'm confident. I'm going to kill this test, right? the next thing that you need to do, which is practice healthy and encouraging self-talk. And this is super important to do, well, one, in every aspect of your life, but also when you're practicing or studying for a test. And why is this important? Um, when you're taking the test, think of, of a time maybe you know you didn't do too hot on a question, right? Sometimes we get stuck on that question, even though we're five questions after the fact, right? We're still thinking about, oh man, I don't think I did that question right. I should have done this instead. And we're not giving our 100% attention to the rest of the test. And that's not good, right? We kind of get stuck in a maze and we don't want to do that. So if we can practice healthy and encouraging self-talk, we can say, we can get in the habit of saying, okay, I made a mistake, I can learn from this. Oh, this is a geometry question. I'll be sure to practice geometry after this test, right? So when I retest, I won't get stuck on a question like this again, right? Versus, dang, I'm so stupid. Like, why couldn't I just get this right? I've been studying so hard and here I am messing up on a geometry question and I'm in a pre-calc class, right? We don't want to do the latter, but we want to be able to say, cool, I fumbled the bag this time, but you know, I got it next time. You want to be able to motivate yourself and you want to be able to talk positively to yourself so that you don't get bogged down in the middle of the test. So I will tell you that test writers um, are your enemy. <laughs> They're your biggest haters when it comes to prepping for tests or taking tests. So really, this test is 1v2, where you, it's you against test writers and yourself. So if you can get in the habit of motivating yourself and talking to yourself positively, you can turn it into a 1v1 type of situation, um, which is ideal, right? The next thing that is going to help you build confidence before the test is to learn your strengths and weaknesses and practice. When you come across a question type or maybe a subject, or you just make a simple mistake or any type of mistake, you need to be able to say, okay, cool. This is something that I need to spend more time on, you know, 
put add in that encouraging self talk and say I got this. I will let my tutor know, or I I will look for a question bank on geometry. And I say geometry because I personally don't like geometry. <laughs> but and you didn't smile through your weakness, right? Like when you're working on it. Like when I work on geometry, I just smile through the geometry because I know I hate it, um, and it's not my jam, but. I know that I can get through it. And I know that with practice, geometry is not an issue, right? Um, see that positive self-talk, even though I know that I don't like geometry and it can be an issue for me. Um, and then celebrate every win, no matter how small. Let's say I do one geometry perfect, one geometry question perfectly. I'm going to celebrate that win. I'm going to go get me a chai tea latte and say, girl, you did it. Congrats, right? Even though there may have been 10 geometry questions and I just did that one question well, I'm still going to celebrate that one question. Because eventually that one question is going to turn into three, five, seven, ten, 10, right? Um, and then create a warm up playlist. Um, for those of you who like to listen to music when you study, make sure you do something that's mainly instrumentals. Um, so no words. You don't want <laughs> your brain to be doing two different tasks at once. So I love a good lo-fi playlist, um, but also a warm-up playlist. So when you're going to take the test, um, warm-up playlists, we kind of use them for sports. Well, I did anyways, but I tend to use them in everything now. So like if I'm going to a job interview or I'm about to take a test, I'm listening to my warm-up playlist so I can start feeling myself. I feel confident. I feel like I'm undefeatable. Okay. So practice these things. So again, how to build confidence outside of test taking is to fake it till you make it, believe that you can do it because Let's be real, you can. Um, practice healthy, positive, and encouraging self-talk. Know your strengths and your weaknesses. Address them, smile through them, embrace them, practice, and then create a warm-up playlist. So let's talk about what this looks like when we're actually taking the test, right? Like, let's say if we were preparing for the SAT or the ACT. So when we're practicing, right, um, <laughs> we know you can't make it to any championship without practicing, right? So think of your test as a championship game. We need to practice. So we need to practice our plays. We need to practice, so our plays, so like, let's say game plan, right? What questions we're gonna spend the most time on? What questions are we gonna LOTD? So letter of the J, like just bubble in, most people choose B or C, bubble in B and then move on, right? What? So what questions we're gonna attempt? What questions we're not gonna attempt? So think of your test as a championship game. We know we can't win the championship without practicing, right? So when we're practicing, we're going to do all of those things we just talked about, about how to build self-confidence, right, before the test. And we're doing that when we're practicing because it's going to transfer to game day, right? All the habits, all the plays, the skills, the things you do and don't do when you're practicing is going to translate to game day. Um, so you always want to approach your practice as if it is game day. So you need to lock in, be focused, don't let there be any distractions if you can help it. Get your warm up playlist going, your in game playlist or your in game playlist going, whatever you need. Make sure that your practice environment is very similar to your game day environment. Um, thinking of SAT, ACT, let's say we're, we're doing, we're studying for the ACT, right? Let's say geometry questions aren't my jam, right? So maybe if I'm at home doing practice questions, I'm going to do a lot of geometry, but I'm also going to, if I, let's say if I'm doing like a full time to practice test at home, um, I'm probably going to do it maybe at the library, right? Because there's going to be a lot of people moving around and shuffling, which is going to kind of be like game day or the official test day where there's other students sneezing, coughing, stressed, right? <laughs> so 
I'd probably do it in an environment that's not my home. Um, and I'd probably be like, okay, cool. For this test, my game plan is to focus on the math topics that I'm really good at, the math topics that I know how to do, right? I'll save geometry for last. And if I can finish them or if I can get to them, great. If not, I'm going to pick a letter and move on. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to practice self-talk, healthy self-talk, right? I'm like, ooh, girl, you're killing it. You killed those algebra one and algebra two questions. Now let's challenge ourselves and do some geometry. All right, girl, that wasn't so hot, but you were able to use the process of elimination and get down to two answers. So that 50-50 chance of getting it right is looking good to me. I feel confident. I'm gonna choose C and move on, right? So always keep positive energy as well. Um, I know that it's easy to get bogged down, especially when you're studying it and you're stuck in a question and you just don't know how to do it. Keep it there, leave it there, keep your frustration there, move on to the next question and come back when you have time and when you're in a better headspace. And also smile through the mistake, right? Smile through the frustration, like, man, this geometry question is killing me, but I got this. I'm gonna move on to the next one, but I'll come back, right? So being able to embrace your mistakes and maybe moments of weakness is a, a moment of growth, really, right? Like we can identify our areas of growth and then push through them. And this is what you're going to have to do, because remember, is 1v2, you're also competing with yourself. So you're competing with the self that talks negatively. You're competing with the self that has doubts. You're competing with the self that says that you can't do something. I believe you can win that battle, but you have to believe that you can win that battle. Let's say, let's think of actual test day environment. Um, confidence is going to impact your question selection. So I gave an example earlier where I didn't feel confident about a question. I didn't feel like I could do it, right? That hard geometry question, it was kicking my butt. But you have to feel confident in your knowledge of self, right? To say, okay, cool. I don't feel too hot about this question. I don't necessarily have enough time to spend on this question, um, but I can eliminate answers that I for sure know are wrong. Um, and I'm gonna feel confident in my ability to do so. And I'm going to bubble B and I'm gonna confidently and boldly move on to the next question. Putting this all together and thinking of um, our petty competitor, uh, that is the test writers, um, we know that they're going to put traps in the test. They want to trip us up. They want to, they basically want to see us fail, right? Because they want us to keep having to retest and retest and retest. And so one way that they do this is they put hard questions in there. They put traps and tricks um, and they want to kill your confidence along the way while you're taking this test and they want self-doubt to creep in so if we can practice self-talk positive self-talk if we can practice smiling through our mistakes if we can practice just being confident in general and believing in ourselves we're winning half the battle right like there's nothing that can stop us if we believe that we can do something and that we have the ability to pick ourselves up when we make a mistake or fall and continue to keep growing and shining. My name is Brenea Johnson and today we talked about the importance of self-confidence when prepping and test taking. I hope this was helpful and that you were able to find at least one good nugget from it. Have a good day. Bye.